Tesla will release third quarter results on Tuesday after the close. To prepare for the release, we're going to review where the consensus estimates stand relative to the net earnings implied by management's guidance. Then we'll run some scenarios through our earnings model for what we believe will be the two key factors on this quarter's call, including one, whether or not management will change their 2016 production run rate estimate of 1,600 to 1,800 vehicles per week, and two, any impact on our current CapEx estimates for 2016, including details on the Tesla energy ramp or the Model 3 development, which could strain our cash flow estimates. In this video, we'll be using management's guidance from the last shareholder letter, which is available on the Investor Relations page, and the guidance starts on page four. We'll also be using our Tesla earnings and valuation model. If you're new to this model, it follows the same approach as the other companies that we follow. So in the upper left-hand corner, you have the summary of the price earnings multiple and the discounted cash flow valuation. The income statement is forecasted on both a gap and non-gap basis, and the model is color-coded. So anywhere you see an orange cell, those represent consensus estimates. Purple cells represent company guidance and typically have a comment that includes the full range of that guidance. And the blue cells represent our estimates. The income statement is fed by assumptions in the segment details. You can see that we have breakdowns for vehicle deliveries and gross margin uh, by vehicle. We also have the regulatory credit information and some assumptions for the Tesla energy products. That's followed by some ratio analysis and CapEx um, or excuse me, OPEX assumptions, as well as a breakdown of non-GAAP items. Below the income statement segment details, we have the full balance sheet and cash flow statement, followed by the valuation section. So here's the PE section and the discounted cash flow section. If you'd like to download this model, it's available for free on our webpage, gutenbergresearch.com. Just click on the free models tab and register and at that point you'll have access to all of our earnings models. So you can scroll down to uh, Tesla and just click this button to download. Now let's go through the guidance for the third quarter. We're going to start with total vehicle deliveries which management already disclosed in early October was going to be 11,580 vehicles for the third quarter. We don't know what the breakdown between Model S and Model X is, so in our model we just assigned 50 vehicles, um, or 50 deliveries for Model X, and then we assigned the remainder to Model S. Management also gave some guidance on the average selling price, which they estimate to decline by 100 basis points from last quarter. However, we needed to input a slightly higher price to get back to the total consensus revenue estimate of 1.26 billion for the quarter. So. To show that in our model, we put in the higher, slightly higher um, average selling price for Model S, and then we put this note in here to show that it's diverging to some extent to um, management's guidance. Next item is the regulatory credits, which management guided to $45 million in total. And we can see that in this section right here, where they say, total 45 million regulatory credits including 30 million for zero emission vehicle credits so we input those items directly 30 million for um, zero emissions and then 15 million for other regulatory credits from there we move on to profitability and um, management did not say exactly what the automotive gross margin was going to be they did say that they expect non-GAAP gross margin to be slightly below the second quarter level. And then they also say that gross margin for the service and other revenue was going to be comparable to the second quarter. So that's in uh, the next paragraph here. Um, so what we did is we set the non-GAAP gross margin for Model S 100 basis points below what we saw in the second quarter and then we kept the service and other constant at 2.2 percent. Next we move to operating expenses which management guided to be between 5 and 10 percent um, in terms of growth from the second quarter and if you scroll up we, we assign 
OPEX using research and development costs as a percentage of revenue and SG&A also as a percentage of revenue. And if you scroll up to our income statement, you can see that our total estimated operating expense is about 5.4%. So that represents the bottom end of management's range. We also had to make assumptions for interest income, other income, and provisions for taxes. And in all three of those cases, we kept the ratios for those items in line with um, historic averages. And when we put all those assumptions in, we get back to a uh, net non-GAAP diluted loss per share of 45 cents, which is in line with consensus estimates. And this shows that management's guidance is generally in line with the consensus heading into this week's release, with a bit of room for variability on the average vehicle selling price. Next, let's run some scenario analysis on those two key items that we'll be watching for on this, this earnings call. First, on the production estimates for next year. Our consensus calibrated model currently estimates just over 83,000 uh, vehicles produced and delivered for 2016. And this is the low end of management's weekly uh, rate guidance. If we bump that up to the high end of their guidance at 94,000 by changing the Model S growth rate, we can see that the EPS and the value per share go from 228 and $215 to, let's just change this. to 94,000. Okay, you can see it goes up to 275 per share and $251, which shows that there's some significant upside if management can execute on the production plans for next year. Let's now undo that change and run the other scenario and take a look at the capex. For that, we'll scroll down to our cash flow statement. And if we just, to get grounded, take a look at where we stand in regards to CapEx. So right now we have 2016 CapEx at $832 million. Let's run a scenario where our CapEx for 2016 is equal to what we had in 2015 at $1.5 billion. This scenario is more a question of risk from cash burn and less an earnings and valuation question. So before we make any changes, let's take a look at our current cash uh, balance estimate for 2016, which is just over a billion dollars. Now let's assume that our new CapEx estimate is driven by expenditures in the fourth quarter, just for simplicity's sake. So we'll change this fourth quarter growth estimate to 407, which will get us back to 1.5 billion, and then for the first quarter of next year we gotta bring that down so that there's no change going forward. Okay, so now we're at CapEx of 1.5, and you can see that our cash estimate has now fallen to just over $370 million. This is a dangerously low level and would probably require the issuance of additional debt or equity capital. These are just two of the many scenarios which could play out over the next year, so feel free to plug in some of your own assumptions. Be sure to check back after this week's earnings call when we update this model and post the results. And if you found this analysis useful, we follow a similar approach with all the companies we cover. So please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and good luck with the release.